the seminar we have mr sunil kant munjal with us mr munjal needs no introduction but for the benefit of uh, large number of uh, students who may also be attending this mr munjal is one of the most influential uh, business leaders from india he is chairman of hero enterprise and munjal bcu center of innovation and entrepreneurship he is also chancellor of bml munjal university and uh, chairman of uh, the board of doon school he is a business promoter and institution builder a social entrepreneur and is an avid advocate of steam education he is also passionate for art healthcare and skill development we welcome you sir for inauguration of the seminar this is yours sir. thank you thank you very much and i'd like to add my welcome uh, as well to all those who have joined this session uh, this is important for a variety of reasons one because for a long time many of us across the globe and more particularly in india have said that the method of the current education system needs to undergo a change and the reason for that was that the big focus that we have had for quite a while has been on has been on rote learning more than anything else in the last couple of decades the focus towards engineering and technology sharpened and stem education became a kind of a norm across the globe so the focus on more specialization in the professional areas of law medicine and engineering became the preferred option for many students certainly in india but what we find is that across the globe if you look at successful leaders they never ever have a unitary focus they have the ability to straddle many issues at one time and therefore the education of the kind that will be offered by this new initiative or that is already being offered by the birmingham city university is the arts the softer aspect of the arts the softer aspect of the arts in what is normally considered the hard, harder aspect of technology and engineering to science technology engineering and maths if you add the arts what you are doing is appealing to the left and the right side of the brain concurrently and i think that is important for us to try and build leaders for the future who have holistic thinking who have the ability not just to address a problem with a technical solution but a wholesome address so that the problem is actually in a manner that not only is it resolved that is unlikely to come back to you again creativity is not new it has been part of technology always when you do an engineering design somebody who has the ability to draw or or draft is clearly a better uh, engineer too so which is why and and the flip side is true as well which is why it's become absolutely critical for us to focus on this new method of education we in the bcm foundation uh, this is a family foundation set up by our family focused only on education we run a number of schools and colleges we have about 30000 uh, children studying in our schools right now and we have constantly been looking out to find ways to become contemporary to remain contemporary and therefore to have a renewal in our system constantly this is a wonderful confluence that bcu the birmingham city university and the bcm foundation bring to you by way of the munjal bcu center in ludhiana the reason we believe it is essential for us to be engaged in something like this is it is clear this is the direction the world is moving in we do not want to be a follower which will get on to this path 2 or 5 or 10 years later we would like to lead this change we would like to lay down the path so there is going to be some experimentation in what we do as well so this initiative is very critical for us 
it is absolutely imperative for a city like Ludhiana, state like Punjab and the northern region of India to look at this as the next horizon for growing future leaders who have the ability to work with technology, to be able to look at also the arts and creatively uh, appeal to and approach situations in life. I want to say a big thank you to the team at BCU, uh, Professor Julian Beer, Alison Honor, Joe Burge, Bernard Curran, Dr. Vijay Venkatesh, Makhan Singh, who in initially was the first port of call that we had in our, in our first early meetings, and Professor Philip Plowden. Uh, I may have missed some names, but a big thank you to all of you at the team at BCU. We truly appreciate the opportunity at this partnership and we do think this is going to be a win-win for all of us. We would like to offer both undergraduate and graduate school uh, studies and certification to students who come in here, but that's not where we will stop. Considering what is going on in Ludhiana, in small industry, we want to look at real life practical problems and figure out ways to resolve them in the most efficient manner. We also want to encourage innovation. Therefore, the focus on startups, resolving issues which are a felt need, finding young people and the not so young people who have ideas, who they think can be put to work. We will offer an accelerator on campus as well and allow them to lean on each other. The different program, programs that will run at MBCU will actually benefit from each other's co-creation and being present at the same time. The third is to find ways to look at problems, actual problems, practical problems and issues that industry faces. So on all three fronts, we hope to have an offering which will be launched in the not too distant future. Uh, actually, if it was not for COVID, we would already have been ready but there is a little bit of a time delay, but I think that is also justified. But at the same time, it has given us more time to prepare better as we move forward. And this is, this is an offering in a sense, we believe, which is our responsibility as a family, as a company and a business to help and facilitate an improvement in the overall industrial culture, in the culture of design thinking, in the culture of innovation and research, in the culture of bringing in efficiency all around in the education system linked to real life issues and industry linked to academics and innovative thinking. So we believe this will be a very unique offering and we hope, and I do believe, it will be the first of many which will come in the following years. So the focus together on the arts, sciences, technology, engineering, and maths is clearly the way the world is looking at approaching education and also approaching issues in real life in the future. So for us, it is an absolute pleasure and a privilege to be part of the initiation of this unique method of education as also of approaching and helping industry. So big thank you to our team at the BCM Foundation as well, which is led by Dr. Prem Kumar, who opened the first dialogue. Uh, Mr. SK Rai is one of our mentors and leaders in here and senior members of the Munjal family have actively supported this initiative. And I want to thank all of them uh, for doing so as well. So to all of you, a big thank you. I just now looked at my screen and I see it is the flip side around. Oh, wow. Okay. So this tells you that when you're doing this kind of stuff, you have to be looking 360 degrees and not just at yourselves or at somebody else on the screen. <laughs> but thank you all for the opportunity to present this uh, to you and good luck and good wishes. And we do believe this will be an offering 
which all of us together will benefit from. Good luck. Thank you. You need to unmute yourself, Dr. Prem Kumar. Thank you, uh, Sunilji, for an excellent uh, perspective on STEAM education. The Mujal BCU uh, Center of Innovation and Enterprise and the trends in uh, education in future. Now I invite Dr. Vijay Venktesh to go. Dr. Vijay. Actually, if you don't mind, I'm going to come in for half a minute again but before yes. uh, uh, Dr. Venktesh comes in. In India too, uh, as I was saying, there is this need that has been felt for the change in education for a while. We do know that there is a new education policy that has been put out by the regulators and by the government. And that new education policy actually recognizes this. It recognizes the need to mark things like the non-academic scores on things like sports, on debating, on, sp on spare time activities. It recognizes that credits should be allowed and accumulated over a period of time. It allows, recognizes breaks between education. So all of the things that we are proposing to do in this program are in some way going to, to uh, significantly uh, help and move forward the implementation of the new education policy that has been announced by the government of India as well. Thank you. Sneeldi, I know that you are one of the architects of the new policy and you have directly participated in uh, articulating uh, the new, new direction. Thank you very much once again. And now, Dr. Vijay Ventesh, uh, please come in. Thank you so much, sir, Dr. Prem. Thank you so much, sir, sir for your wonderful uh, uh, welcome address. So I have uh, an honor to uh, um, introduce uh, Professor Allison. So the next session will be uh, on uh, introduction to STEAM-based education. Uh, is it just a buzzword? Uh, definitely not. So to present that, we have uh, Professor Allison on her. So um, just to give a short introduction about Professor Allison. She's a pro vice chancellor of faculty of arts, design and media at PCU. She's a national teaching fellow and principal fellow of uh, higher education academy. She has over 25 years of leadership experience in higher education and Aurora national role model for women in HE leadership or leadership foundation. She previously spent 10 years at Oxford Brooks University, rising to the position of associate dean for students experience before becoming pro vice chancellor of B. Mulford Faculty of Arts, Design and Humanity, and then joining Birmingham City University. We are delighted to have you, ma'am. The dais is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you for the kind introduction, Dr. Vijay, and also uh, Mr. Sanal Mundal, and of course, Dr. Prem. Um, I'm now going to share my screen, so please just allow me to do that quickly, and I will be straight back with you. So thank you very much for the introduction and I'm delighted to be here and thank you for inviting us to be part of this very exciting uh, discussion around what is STEAM education and this has been absolutely at the forefront of my thinking but also my practice and my involvement in higher education for the last 30 years. Um, I'm particularly interested in how STEAM education can enable those students from less advantaged backgrounds that can provide a wider understanding of uh, complex problems, but also how it can provide social and um, interesting capital and confidence building for students who can then take that forward into employment. So I'm gonna take you through some of my thoughts around what is STEAM education and the question, is it just a buzzword? So STEAM education is uh, very much uh, an educational approach to learning that uses science, technology, engineering, the arts and mathematics. And it's about guiding our students learning through a transdisciplinary inquiry. And don't worry, I will explain what transdisciplinary means. 
but it's about inquiry. It's about creativity. It's about critical thinking to develop innovative leaders and learners of the 21st century. And as Mr. Munjal has very clearly said, now is the time that we need to develop those new leaders for the future. It embeds creativity and inquiry and imagination at its core, and it's a powerful catalyst for our innovation. It is the moment where innovation becomes unlocked. And many of the STEAM approaches in learning and teaching derive from our creative practices that we actually explore during studio-based or atelier type of teaching in the arts. I'm actually a sculptor myself, so I'm very used to the idea of engaging with ideas, of drawing, of experimenting through materials, with making, with exhausting solutions, not really knowing where I'm actually heading in terms of an outcome. And that notion of the creative mandate meander rather than a direct route from A to B is one that I really very much support in education and learning. So what does that mean? That means that if I take the analogy of jumping onto your Google Maps, finding the quickest route from A to B on a motorway to arrive on time swiftly, but actually not taking any time to look at what is around you to understand your surroundings. Perhaps if you take a more scenic route, perhaps it's a coastal route or through some small towns on minor roads, you discover places that you would not have seen. You actually learn as you go along. You actually have more of an experience of that journey. And perhaps you end up with a different kind of notion of how you might be able to get to the same destination, but with a more interesting journey, having learned more on the way. That would be a good analogy of a creative meander. But ultimately, this is about developing inquisitive and inquiring minds in your students to be able to develop them as creative problem solvers. And in terms of that journey, we talk about how we support that journey through experiences in our STEAM house, which is a fusion of learning, knowledge and practice, which allows the user to activate that innovative process to solve those complex problems. And this is just one of our diagrams that we use to kind of talk about that journey of collaborative experience as we learn. So STEAM is unique in its transdisciplinary approaches. So what does transdisciplinary mean? Well, the word trans as a Latin word comes from across, over, beyond. It's about an emergence of new disciplines which transcend the, the boundaries of a, of a particular discipline. So this is about moving out beyond our own particular subjects and expertise, which often our linear forms of education lead us into. So this is about actually broadening out our thinking and these are the skills that we're looking to develop in our new uh, graduates for the future. So transdisciplinarity combi combines, of course, interdisciplinarity, but with a participatory approach. So what does that participation look like? Well, our research models and our approaches to learning and teaching in STEAM involves a non-academic participation. So who are these non-academics, these equal participants in our process to reach a common goal? usually a solution to a problem at society at large, whether it's local or global. Well, those participants can be our local industries, they can be very much our large companies, they can be disruptive thinkers, they can be small businesses, but this is very much about working in partnership with them. It can be considered as a culmination of our interdisciplinary efforts, of us coming together. I've worked on projects with Robots for the Social Good, where I've worked with nurses, doctors, engineers, architects, social scientists, to think about what do robots need to be to be able to be, for example, robots for the social good, perhaps around healthcare, or indeed supporting the training of our nurses and doctors. That's just one example. Transdisciplinary also has a holistic approach uh, associated with it. So this is not about silo working, quite far from it. This is about creating new knowledge. And this is about synthesizing that from our existing disciplines, bringing that knowledge with and to that discourse, that combined activity of thinking about what kind of knowledge do we need to be able to create a new whole solution or even a hybrid, a completely new product, a service, a design. 
So how can STEAM education support new thinking? Well, it develops new ideas to tackle social problems or meet social needs. So you'll all be familiar, I'm sure, with social entrepreneurship or social innovation. These are particular areas and practices that draw on STEAM education and approaches. It's grown out of that need to innovate collectively and no time like the present do we need to come together, not to work in competition with each other, but collectively and embrace that interdisciplinarity and transdisciplinary approaches where the researcher, the learner and the experts in industry come together within the learning sphere. And STEAM approaches in education are particularly effective in finding social innovation solutions. We have so many complex problems, the pandemic has shown us that. And this is an opportunity where we can come together to find complex solutions for complex problems. You will rarely find that coming from one particular discipline. It requires several different lenses to understand the problem. So when I had the great uh, privilege of being able to work with the very uh, uh, wonderful but late Dr. Pamela Hart Hartigan, uh, she was the director of the Skoll Centre in the University of Oxford. And um, I've worked very closely with them in the side business centre. And she came up with this term, which was apprenticing with the problem. And she felt, and in our discussions, we also developed this further into a particular social entrepreneurship and innovation programme, which led to become uh, a new social entrepreneurship partnership. And in fact, led Oxford to become the first place of social enterprise. So with that major impact. But it was really about that need of social entrepreneurs and social innovators to need to learn about the problem before jumping in to try and solve it. And this is where the creative meander really comes into play, where an artist's aim is not to come up with um, a piece of artwork immediately. It explores um, as an artist, all the options, it researches, it looks at precedents, it looks at existing artistic practice, it goes to museums, the artist actually um, takes in the world in terms of its visual research, so it might decide to start to draw to explain things via visual communication, it will collect inspiration, whether that's through colour, texture, <laughs> imagery, and it's about that journey that we're doing to encourage our students not to actually move to an immediate solution um, without going through an exhaustive process of design thinking. So we explore the problem collaboratively with others because inevitably we all see things in a different way, we have our different disciplines and we achieve a range of perspectives, understandings and solutions. And this is actually where cultures and gender actually is incredibly important. So the idea of equality, diversity and inclusion must also be thought of because they also will come with a particular perspective of, from those individuals and those learned experiences. So we need to understand the current solutions as well. So we have to understand the kind of precedence that exists in order to identify the solution gaps for innovation. None of my students in design or product design or architecture would ever embark on considering a new solution without understanding what has gone before. So actually looking at the precedence of design and looking at what has already been learned. So not reinventing the wheel, but actually creating a new one. So why, has, um, why uh, using a STEAM interdisciplinary approach? What's important about STEAM as a transdisciplinary approach? So transdisciplinary and interdisciplinary instruction fosters and advances cognitive ability. So what is cognitive ability? Well, cognitive skills, there are eight of them to think, listen, learn, understand, justify, question, and pay close attention. So my question here would be, do we do enough around encouraging our learners to know how to learn? And I think this is a key challenge for education as we move forward from when our children are young all the way through to higher education. And if we don't continue to focus on the idea of how do we learn best and how do we encourage that greater cognitive ability, I think we will move too quickly into our normal didactic approaches, which are the old styles of learning. And we're actually talking about a new approach here. So it includes the capacity to be able to reason and plan and solve problems, but also to think abstractly, comprehend complex ideas, to learn quickly and learn from experience. 
but it also happens um, to be an opportunity as demonstrated by other scholars, uh, Kavalowski, Newell and Field and Vess, they've all identified a range of educational benefits of interdisciplinary learning, including gains in the ability to recognize bias and the limitation in your own thinking and disciplines. It's about being more inclusive. It's about thinking critically and being able to communicate your critical discourse. It's about tolerating ambiguity. It's okay not to know what the solution is. And in fact, to jump to the solution immediately rarely leads to the most innovative or effective solution. It provides the opportunities to learn through failure. In creative subjects, we don't see it as a failure if we've made 20 maquettes. We see that as part of the creative journey to actually identify what is the best outcome that we're trying to arrive at. What is the actual masterpiece that we want to create? A masterpiece is never generated first off. It's through a course of actions of doing and thinking and refining and honing. And it's also about acknowledging and appreciating ethical concerns of others. So it goes back to the inclusive and EDI principles. So what are the key benefits? It's around promoting active engagement. No longer can our learners be passive. They need to be our active, active participants and in partnership with us in their learning. So I take the example here that our education suggests that passive sitting in a classroom, listening only to a teacher will not necessarily head to learning or attainment. And conversely, active engagement with educational material within or outside of school will support learning. And we've got some examples of that in terms of guided discovery, problem-based learning, incidental learning, experiential learning. There's many opportunities for you to explore that with different approaches and pedagogies that you might want to adopt. Now, some of the key benefits of STEAM education for me is around promoting deep engagement and intrinsic motivation. So what do I mean by that? Well, it's very interesting to see as the creative subjects were squeezed out of the education in our schools in the UK, how the actual wellness and the mental health conditions decreased in our young people. Now, this is not by coincidence. So Chahait Smahaili calls the, the flow state a state of intrinsic motivation manifested by intense emotional and intellectual excitement. Now, what does that mean? So let me take you back, for example, to the moment when you were a child or perhaps even more recently, you're given a set of coloring pencils. You have an activity which is around coloring in or perhaps a simple dot to dot. Perhaps you can remember when you engaged with undertaking a jigsaw puzzle. And at those moments when we draw or when we're actually um, thinking in a different way and engaging with a task, which um, intake, requires more of a concentration level, um, where we actually unplug from that constant sort of noise that we experience with constant connectivity, with our phones, our social media, our use of digital connection, but actually we slow down. And this is where the deep flow state occurs. Our breathing starts to become less rapid, our blood pressure decreases, we engage into a deep flow state with something which could be quite repetitive or cathartic. It might actually be quite more complex than this. It might be around quite an interesting brain teaser or a problem that you're trying to solve, but as a team. But once we engage with that problem and we experience it and we are actually immersed in it, we actually achieve a high state of flow. And that means that we are deeply engaged and there's a balance there between the challenge that we're given and the skills. And you can see that there's a whole range of how we might feel highly engaged, but we can tip into anxiety or too relaxed. And the key is to be able to achieve in the top, uh, top right hand corner of my diagram, that state of deep flow, where there's a balance between the challenge level and the skill. So we have to give skills to our students to be able to feel confident, to be able to reach this deep flow. 
So we do that right through our STEAM academies, working with young children. So I think this is a really key aspect of developing STEAM in our, Lond uh, in our um, earlier learners. So this is about adopting the STEAM models of education through play, using Lego for serious play, experimentation with making, but also encouraging um, young people to uh, have the ability to think and see through a range of different lenses, which can also help them to align to this idea of who do I want to be and what do I want Want to contribute to society. So what we do is we actually encourage children to think using their imagination and intuition. And I think these are two aspects of uh, human beings and human tendencies that we don't draw on enough in education. So for example, we might ask our young people to have a particular thinking of a solution to a problem, but to imagine if they were an artist, how would they approach it if they were an artist? How would they approach it if they were a doctor? How would they approach it if they were a teacher, for example? How would they approach it if they were an engineer? Um, and that actually starts to encourage children to think about how those particular um, disciplines approach uh, problem solving and also how to learn. And um, just those instant conversations around, oh, I think a train driver would think like this. Um, that's how they, they might actually approach it. Um, so just a few last slides for me to finish off um, is around some of the benefits of STEAM education. So we see a transition in our learners to be creative, effective problem solvers, to be learners as active participants, um, but also to become teachers of their discipline. So that confidence building is incredibly important, but to be able to work in teams and be, to, be, to be collaborative and to create new knowledge, but also to create new modes of leadership. We do that through STEAM House, as my colleagues will talk about much more so over the course of their presentations. Um, and we've got some nice images of how that's looking and developing in Birmingham here in the city. I won't unpack the transdisciplinary further, but I've already talked about problem-based learning, active learning, collaborative and experimental learning, all techniques that you can try. And there's much to be learnt and you can find out more about this. It's readily available. Um, we deliver this through STEAM Design and also STEAM Tech. Um, and I also wanted to just um, say that if you want to have a really good example of this, you can look at our Staffordshire Horde helmet example, where we bring together science museum experts um, and designers of the new Saxon helmet, which you'll now see in the Birmingham museums. And finally, just to say that our STEAM graduates will possess some new graduate attributes and they will be able to be those resilient um, emergent uh, graduates that are future fit to meet the emerging needs, not only of that learner, but also the workplace and industry and the emerging needs of the world. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank so you very I, much. May I, Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Prim Kumar, may I come in one moment again? Uh, yes, just to say a big thank you to Alison. Uh, she, she is a unique model of what this education is about, to bringing different streams together to get to a better outcome. And Alison, you're, you're a standout example yourself. So thank you for for explaining that wonderfully well. And for those of you who are interested, this will be further enumerated in detailed sessions, deep dives over the 14th, 15th, and the 16th of July. Each day there's going to be a session. On the 14th, you will have one on STEAM pedagogy. On the 15th, on STEAM and technology. And on the 16th, on STEAM innovation and enterprise. So the idea is to get a wholesome view of what are the different aspects, different perspectives, and how it is actually relevant for many of us, even though it may not look like it's directly uh, applied to what I do or what you do. So I think that that would be helpful for those of you who are interested to spend some time and get some, uh, spend some serious quality time there and get into a much deeper dive. So thank you again. And I'd also like to thank, uh, thank the Mind Mind Institute which has uh, helped setting this event together. Over to you, Dr. Prem Kumar. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Sunilji, for uh, this note. Uh, now that uh, we have the conceptual understanding, it is time to get into the global insights. And we have uh, Joanna Arch from uh, Birmingham City University to talk about the global insights into creating an innovation and enterprise community. Joe is director of 
innovation enterprise and employability at Birmingham City University. Joe leads a large team of innovation and enterprise practitioners supporting over 1,000 businesses to grow and is active in innovation enterprise policy and program development. Joe has also been leading the development of STEAM over the last eight years, collaborating and exploring globally to build international STEAM practice. We are delighted to have Joe Birch with us. Ma'am, the forum is yours. Ma'am, you're muted. It is a real honour to talk to our esteemed guests online and a huge thank you to Dr Prem for the introduction. Namaste. I am Jo Birch, the Director of Innovation and Enterprise and Employability, and it has been my work over the last eight years looking at how we develop an innovation ecosystem for our region and the world beyond. We believe that STEAM is at the heart of everything, and I am currently sitting in Birmingham, which built the Industrial Revolution on the artist and the engineer, the heartland of the centre of STEAM. But our journey in terms of STEAM House started with people. We believe it is people that build innovation ecosystems, and that's brilliantly represented here in the partnership with MBCIE. When we started our investigations, we looked to the comment of Henry White, who first coined the term STEAM in 2010, saying that we simply cannot compete in a new economy unless we do something about creativity and innovation. This exploration encouraged us to link across the world. And to begin, our journey started with Europe, where we started to understand how innovation ecosystems worked across boundaries. The work made us focus on how growth is created, not just for one part of society, but for many parts of society, startups, large commercial organizations, students who want to develop uh, savvy ideas that can go out into the world and open innovation and social innovation that Alison was talking about before. In terms of our work, we started to think about making some pledges of where we wanted to end up. For our city to grow, to connect, to nurture, for our university to support thinking, research and innovation influencing our community around us and building those strong partnerships that Alison mentioned previously. And for our team, who's incredibly passionate, not just about innovation, but creativity, engineering, science, technology, encouraging that inquisitiveness, focusing on collaboration and creating the exciting energy that will make a difference to our region. The exploration and those pledges made us look further afield and it started a tour of the United States looking at what was happening in the East Coast. We met a lady called Babette Alana, an advisor to President Obama, who was looking at how art and design could act, uh, add to the national STEM agenda. So to try and really focus on that creative problem solving that we've already highlighted and to help that to foster economic growth. Babette Alana, who worked in the Rhode Island School of Design, enabled us to see a range of her students and academics who were exploring how they could contribute to this debate. We discovered a range of different concepts and thoughts, which Alison's outlined some of already. 
but it was about combining the mind, helping to see new possibilities. It was about cooperation, coordination, but most of all, collaboration. And it was about helping everybody in the educational ecosystem, in the business ecosystem, in the social ecosystem, providing a cognitive threshold to think about a new way. And what they were doing in the East Coast was trying to capture the magic by allowing everybody to look at how they could work in this way on their own terms. As Alison mentioned, the underpinning thinking is supported by this process of transdisciplinary thinking, making sure that we think through both sets of disciplines rather than just one and making sure we identify the problem at the centre so that everybody is looking at how they can advance some of the more complex challenges by having this deeper understanding. Excitingly, we met a range of students from across different academic institutions in the East and West Coast of America who had started a programme called STEAM with us. It was student-led, their programs and events aimed to inspire a generation of creative problem solvers, focusing on transdisciplinary working and learning. It was supported by an infrastructure which really captured our imagination, not just about academic support, space two, and curriculum challenges, and using the academics as curators to bring those communi communities together. All of this work was seed funded to encourage the students to participate. And that started to inspire our journey to think about how we could embrace and what next. Some of the work that we did in STEAM with us took us to realizing that there was a huge amount of good practice in the West Coast and a particular institution, which is a public university in the States called Cal Poly. Cal Poly is a renowned engineering institution, but having been at the top of the list for graduates, for undergraduates, suddenly moved right down as Texas overtook it. And they tried to understand how they could reimagine their institution to provide compelling graduates for the workforce of the future. And so started their tour with STEAM, where they developed major and minor modes which brought students together to create really exciting and vibrant curriculum. And we met a chemistry student and a design student who'd worked together so that the design student understood how to frame a problem in a scientific way. And the chemistry student understood how to communicate complex terms in multimedia formats. What both students told us was the power of working together made them see their roles in a completely different context, in an exciting context in which they could engage with a wider society, a wider world, and had completely changed the way they thought about future careers and future job prospects. The visit also showed us the important role of enterprise, which my colleague Bernard Curran will be talking about later in today's seminar. We saw here how they developed a hatchery, a pre-incubation resource that got students thinking about how they become startup savvy. And they also showed how they interlinked this hatchery with incubators to provide really robust mentorship. We identified a number of themes from the visit, the importance of enabling processes and structures to build really strong curriculum, the importance of learning by doing, helping students gain new insights, the power of curriculum delivery spaces which were built to encourage collaboration. Many faculties will have a very busy schedule of space we need to allow individuals to be able to meet together in shared spaces where that collaboration can be rich and meaningful. We saw the power of bridge making and the importance that infrastructure is not just about buildings, but about people too. From the visit, we really started to think about the importance of enterprise and incubation and how that might inform our steam house journey. And this, took us to our next visit, which was on to Canada. 
we understood that DMZ were purporting themselves to be the world leading incubation unit. And we wanted to understand a little bit about why that was the case. We were also really interested in Waterloo University that has a very action learning centered uh, student experience with high levels of work experience that was co-located with a building called Communitech which was an old building from the Blackberry uh, Foundation that was set up in Waterloo and Kitchener. These different spaces and these different approaches brought a real sense of expectation. The culture of expectation really brought together a community of collaborators who were interested in making a difference. In respect of that incubatee, we learned that mentorship was really critical. The coordination of programs, driving networks, skills gyms and tailored approaches was really important for each size of business. The layout of Communitech really showed how important it was to think of spaces so that students and academics and businesses can come together to coordinate, to collaborate, to identify new problems and challenge solutions. And it identified that in the educational system, interns can play a really powerful role in businesses in generating new solutions. We saw a fully formed ecosystem that created an excellent set of conditions for enterprise growth. All of this thinking resulted in us setting up our prototype, our Steamhouse Digbus site, which is a 15,000 square foot prototype of space which brings production, a lab for thinking, space to develop masterclasses and curriculum, a co-working space which would allow us to start working with industry, our students and with research to develop and demonstrate the value that could be created. The prototype has already supported more than 275 businesses. It's generated 50 new products and processes and facilitated 33 research collaborations. The prototype has helped us understand some of the issues that we need to address, some of the communities we need to bring in order to make our bigger vision work. It also resulted in us wanting to further explore our work across Europe. And we developed a further set of projects, one around looking at policy innovation, looking at cities and regions and understanding how STEAM could play a major role in informing scoping spaces in cities to drive innovation forward. It also helped us bring together a community across its European education institutions using Erasmus Plus funding from Europe to promote curriculum innovation and has helped us create new STEAM teaching methods and toolkits create and amplify innovative, innovative thinking and learners. And it shapes some new principles which are now being globally accepted as key parts of what it means to work in a STEAM context, collaboration, conversation, critical thinking, curiosity, openness, exploration, newness and process. Alison mentioned before about the importance of deep thinking. These principles help move from the reptilian brain to the neocortex. The neocortex is where we have our most advanced thinking. And this is what happens when you develop that kind of practice, which allows both right and left sides of the brain to form at their best. Using these principles and all the experience that we garnered, we went out to the corporate sector, small businesses, micro businesses and stakeholders to do more market analysis, to try and understand where we could develop our educational programs and our products and services in our new innovation campus to deliver an inspirational new campus that's so much more than a building. Steamhouse is going to be a center for collaborative innovation where we help enterprises in our region flourish and prosper. And we're going to do this by cultivating that collaborative space that supports people to start up, learn, experiment, grow and innovate. You will see all of the work we've done in developing our products and services and some of our new learning masterclasses on our new Steamhouse 
website, which you can find at steamhouse.org.uk. We have been testing these new products and services with industry, promoting industry-wide innovation to look at some of the really complex challenges that Henry White identified as I highlighted in one of my initial slides. We've just finished working with the Building Alliance, looking at a collaborative innovation process to help industry stakeholders tackle the thorny issue of single use plastics in the house building sector. What we've observed is based on the quote of John Ron, whatever good things we build end up building us. And so, we have in January the opportunity to open our new 120,000 square foot innovation campus in Digbeth, which will have a hotline to our amazing team in Punjab. But as I said to you before, the building is part of the equation. It is the people that will make the magic of Steamhouse. And it is really wonderful to be online with so many amazing individuals that I know will drive the innovation of the future. If you've been interested in the presentations that you've seen so far or future presentations, Mr. Sunil Munjal mentioned that we've put on for you a range of taster sessions, which we hope will give you the opportunity to explore in a little bit more detail some of the outcomes of our eight years of work. I hope you've enjoyed the presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, ma'am. Uh, just wonderful uh, to share uh, your uh, insight. So without uh, uh, further delay, um, I'm gonna uh, introduce myself very short and uh, start the next presentation. Uh, so let me uh, share my screen. And uh, with it, I will introduce you, no problem. <laughs> uh, we have heard about the conceptual uh, underpinnings of uh, STEAM, and we have also learned about the international experience. This is time that we talk about uh, technology, and we have Dr. Vijay Venkatesh, who leads the knowledge based engineering lab in the School of Engineering at Birmingham City University and is an expert in the field of visualization, decision support systems, and virtual augmented reality. From the start of 2017, Vijay has been traveling around schools and colleges in West Midlands in UK, Punjab, and Chennai, India, to deliver workshops on future of visualization, virtual and augmented and mixed reality. To young students in engineering, to the use of VR AR technology. We are delighted to have Dr. Vijay here with us. Vijay, the stage is yours. Thank you so much, uh, Doctor. Um, so, uh, so what we're going to see in this session is uh, to follow up with the strong uh, introduction that was given by Professor Allison and Joe. Um, so I want to straight away go into the uh, implementation of how scheme would be uh, if uh, if we have to go about it. So what I would like to do is, uh, I would like to start with uh, uh, a very simple coffee cup uh, model. So what you see is in a, it's just a simple coffee cup. But uh, if you ask an engineer, probably he would say, um, uh, which comes first, if you ask him the question, whether uh, it's a uh, function or form, uh, probably he would say uh, function follows the uh, form. He's thinking from his uh, profession. You know, that's how he's been taught. Can you uh, think in terms of uh, ask the same question to an uh, artist or a uh, uh, non-engineer? They would think from a uh, perspective of uh, uh, a creative side where they will say form comes first rather than function. But in this uh, uh, era that we are in, the main important thing that we need to consider is uh, form and function uh, goes together hand in hand. Even the quote from the uh, uh, Frank Lloyd uh, White would be old, but this is very much to current where, uh, where we are having form and function together. 
we are actually seeing the benefits of both of them when it comes to uh, uh, the education and teaching and learning. So how STEAM helps uh, this kind of uh, uh, teaching, kind of uh, uh, teaching and learning is STEAM integrates all these uh, key aspects uh, into one holistical way of uh, delivery. It's uh, easy to say, but it is really hard to actually uh, uh, show and uh, actually to uh, implement. So there always remains a question, how, how this, this kind of uh, uh, technologies, uh, uh, you know, uh, this kind of uh, domains can, uh, uh, can be useful. So when we, when we uh, see from that perspective, what integrates uh, STEAM? The main uh, enabler we think is the technology. Technology is being the uh, main enabler because technology brings in uh, these key aspects together where uh, makes them uh, learn uh, uh, in one holistic way. So what I'm going to show you uh, guys is uh, how this kind of technology would be really used for in taking such a domain and, uh, and delivering it. So just picture this. Uh, let's take, as Joe mentioned, uh, uh, Birmingham uh, is actually uh, really well known for artists and engineers. So I've taken uh, those two professions. Let's imagine uh, we have uh, an engineer and artist. So if you not from an artistic domain, in any any other domain, if two people who are different uh, they work together how they can uh, come up with an, uh, a product. So in, in this case, let's imagine these two people are actually going to develop a coffee cup, a simple coffee cup. How would they do so? So to do that, what we are going to make use of is technologies like AR, and uh, we are going to use some sensor technology and lots of uh, uh, imagination. So this is what uh, we are uh, we are going to uh, look at. So let's have a look in terms of how uh, how this would this would pan out. How technology can integrate, you know, uh, different uh, people's thinking to go and uh, acquire a creative uh, product. So I'm going to quickly. Uh, uh, show you guys uh, and, uh, and demonstration. Uh, hopefully you can see my screen. So what I have in here is an, uh, um, uh, I'm just gonna wear this one. So, so that, uh, uh, um, let me uh, just stop my video so it's easier. So what happens is, uh, um, so what you see is an hologram of an, uh, uh, a coffee cup. So, but this, this kind of things makes more uh, uh, creativity uh, flow. So for instance, if you take an artist, you are giving an artist a power of an engineer to go and model. So for instance, let's say uh, the artist thinks uh, probably uh, the handle of the coffee cup needs to be smaller, but they can think about it. But when the handle is being shorted, they don't know whether this comes under a standard, whether it is manufacturable. This is where technology comes into play in terms of uh, an engineer actually uh, providing such uh, enhancement. So for instance, if I am an uh, engineer, uh, I would develop such an uh, environment for an artist to work along with me. So for instance, if an artist uh, wants to reduce the size of this, uh, handle they can go on to reduce okay it's it's reducing more i think it's more better i think i want a little bit more maybe more towards it but when you see when they go more in terms of reducing it the the artificial intelligence runs behind it which runs the uh, standard which runs the uh, geometry model of it it immediately points out to them that this is not possible. So what we are seeing is an artist 
it's just not designing something that is for just for a, a, a modeling purpose. They are designing which is manufacturable, which is which is actually uh, working with the standard, which is actually able to uh, 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 sell a more. And this kind of uh, uh, environment, okay, goes beyond in terms of uh, they can also make modifications, see things before it's been even manufactured. So this kind of environment makes both an engineer as well as an, uh, a non-engineer to work together. They may not be an engineer to actually know about the standard because everything is being taken care of the backend system. So is this, is this uh, the only thing that, that stops? I think if, if, an, uh, if an engineer and uh, an artist uh, probably would, would have to go to develop such things, they would go more beyond this. Probably something like this. They would even go to integrate sensors because now homes are becoming very smart. Okay, so probably they will go on to design even to see, okay, I'm, I'm trying to uh, scan my uh, coffee cup. I'm trying to scan my coffee cup. So when I scan my coffee cup, I'm, I'm actually, I can uh, start to uh, pour some water. So I can actually see in terms of uh, what, what, is, what is relevance to it in terms of uh, I can see uh, what has what been the uh, temperature that's actually being involved. Uh, so for instance, the temperature is increasing depending upon the, uh, the, the temperature that is in the coffee cup. So this kind of integration of technology, the product innovation is possible. It's, it's again, it's not rocket science. What I'm doing is a very simple sensor and then uh, point of line, I'm having a an, uh, uh, an temperature sensor, which is in point line, which is actually pointing towards the cup and measuring the sensor data. So this kind of integration, this kind of uh, you know, modeling is what we are trying to bring through STEAM education. The way as, as uh, likely, uh, uh, pointed by uh, uh, Sunil sir, this is something that people, we want people to think in, in different way. We want people to work, different professions to work together. So by doing that, what they achieve is uh, these two key things. One is the adaptability to change and also the creativity in generating new ideas, which is again, a very key thing that is going forward. Uh, we would have in terms of uh, any individual coming as a graduate. So uh, I'll stop there. Uh, this is the kind of culture and this is a kind of uh, learning uh, experience that we want to bring through the uh, Institute, uh, uh, through the, uh, uh, Munjal uh, Birmingham City University Institute. That's that's what we are trying to uh, bring in there. The next session, um, my colleague uh, uh, Bernard, he will uh, take you guys more deep into in terms of okay, there is an innovative uh, idea that's been uh, made as a product by working with different professionals having different mindsets and how they are going to actually. Uh, take this product further, how they are actually going to market or sell even go beyond that. So the next session um, uh, from me uh, would be taken over by uh, uh, my colleague Bernard. So me, myself, uh, I'm going to uh, introduce uh, Bernard as well. So the next uh, session uh, would be uh, on uh, Innovation through uh, STEAM education presented by Mr. Uh, Bernard Curran. So just a short introduction about uh, Bernard. Bernard has over 30 years of experience in creating, growing and exciting successful uh, enterprises. In his career, he has operated in various roles from sales director through managing director to board chair. He has successfully provided advice, coaching, 
and mentoring for over 1000 businesses in various role from non executive to formal consultant and has acted as advisor to multiple uk innovation and incubation bodies bernard has modeled and delivered over 1 lakh square feet of innovation center and numerous successful project uh, we are delighted to have uh, uh, you sir uh, the stage is yours you can take over thank you dr vj Hopefully you can all see my screen. Can you see my screen, PJ? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Um, firstly, uh, I want to thank um, everybody for uh, inviting me to this opportunity today. Um, I've had the privilege pre-pandemic. Uh, of a number of visits to India and um, I want to thank you uh, and say what a privilege and pleasure it's been to uh, be invited to address you today. The warmth and hospitality I've received during uh, my recent visits to India have just been inspirational and uh, I thank you all and I cannot wait to come back and uh, work with you all again uh, on the ground in India. Um, thank you very much indeed for this opportunity. Today, uh, I'd like to talk you through uh, what innovation is, give you some perspectives on STEAM, the artist and the engineer, accelerating change, thinking again about STEAM education, think about the new MBCIE, uh, how it supports a community, um, and supporting new ideas and coming together as a singular community, uh, because together we're definitely stronger. Firstly, uh, innovation and invention are often confused. Invention without purpose or to satisfying a customer need does not actually enable innovation. Innovation is a whole process which takes problem or idea all the way through to the creation of a valuable solution for society, consumers or business. And I think it's fundamental that we understand that invention might be a component within innovation, but innovation is the wrapper that surrounds it all. Another perspective is from uh, the Institute for Innovation and Knowledge Exchange, of which I'm a fellow. Invention is often about spending time, resource and value in creating new ideas and knowledge. Innovation, one could suggest, is actually taking that new knowledge and translating it into value for our societies. If we think about uh, Nikola Tesla, one of the world's greatest inventors potentially, he invented the original light bulb. Unfortunately, as with many of his inventions, he didn't have the ability to take those inventions into social value. It was actually Thomas Edison who created the pathways and the innovation, innovative support structures that enable society to benefit from that invention. If we look at large corporates today, there is a standard rationale to outsource research and development. An example is Google. Google have set up what they call Google Labs all over the world. They engage bright young talent into environments they facilitate to engage in open innovation, exploring new challenges, looking at new ideas, startup solutions and innovation. And actually, we need to encompass that and enable that within our community. 
esteem. We've heard some wonderful interpretation and uh, guidance today from my colleagues. It is the blend of the artist and the engineer. It's the blend in balance that understands that for the customer of any product or service, it is the balance of form and function that actually creates what I describe as desirability. Desirability is the important element that ensures that our, pro our product or our uh, service stands out in the crowded, saturated marketplace of products and services. We've only got to think about the smartphone. What a wonderful piece of functional computing power we have in our hand. But actually, we have it in our hand because we want to touch and feel it because the form is desirable and we embrace it. It's that balance of form and function, and it's a wonderful opportunity for us to come together. Why should we innovate? If we don't innovate, either in society, business, or in our learning environments, actually we will fall behind. We've already talked about the light bulb. Who would have believed less than 10 years ago that the big giants of light bulb manufacturing, the old tungsten filament light bulb, would ever have a competitor. They don't now just have a competitor, they have now lost market traction. And the LED lighting solution is taking over the world. And many of those manufacturing companies in the light bulb sector actually now are in deep difficulty because they didn't recognize that innovation and change was a prerequisite of remaining competitive and, and achieving competitive advantage in their markets. But it's not just about products and services. Innovation can be hugely disruptive. Who would have believed that the largest taxi company in the world would actually not own a single vehicle. It, it, it isn't too long ago that that would have been unbelievable. But Uber is the largest taxi facility in the world and it doesn't own a single taxi. It's completely disrupted. It's ripped apart the business model that was known for many tens of years and disrupted. The largest retailer in the world, Alibaba, has not a single item of stock. For the retailers, for the retail giants in the world, th this was an incredible moment. And many of them are still struggling to catch up with the principles that Alibaba have set in place that have ripped apart what was recognized as the standard operating model in retail. Disruptive innovation, it's exciting, it's change, uh, and it underpins competitive advantage. The pace of change is just enormous. If we think back 100 years ago, the radio was a fabulous new piece of technology. It actually took over 70 years for the first billion worldwide users to take up the radio. If we race forward to the invention and facilitation to the market of the smartphone, that same billion user mark was achieved within five years. The pace of change is just unrelenting. We need to ensure that we are keeping up with that pace of change. Change is, in my opinion, the only consistent. In business, education and society, the important thing is to accept that change is the constant and actually look at the horizon and be ahead of those changes that are racing towards us. If we think about education, particularly in higher education, classically, we deliver our learning in 
vertical pillars of knowledge with singular areas of expertise that enables specialisms, whether that be in nursing or law or, uh, or science, but actually they are isolated areas of learning. I suggest, and we are, we are doing and will do together, that we can disrupt that model of learning. As we've already heard from my colleagues, we will lay the horizontal axis, which is the innovation axis, across the pillars of learning to enable our graduates and our students to modularize their learning, impacted and engaged with real world challenges brought in by our business and social communities to enable them to develop learning across areas of knowledge so that they graduate and come out with uh, workforce ready, recognizing talent and driving change. Within the Punjab, there are significant industrial sectors who we will support through that horizontal thinking to innovate, collaborate, share, and accelerate their performance. Through MBCIE in Ludhiana, we will host education, professional development, product development and prototyping. We will support new ideas and the creation of fabulous new businesses within the STEAM Innovation Hub, which will serve Ludhiana and the wider Punjab in the north of India. Why are startup important? 2019, there were 5 million startups in India. Only 10% of them were successful in the longer term. We need to minimize failure and maximize success. Good incubators will typically reduce failure rates to under two in 10. The valley of death, the worst place for any startup that we've ever known. And I've been there multiple times. We will educate, support, inspire. We will wrap the knowledge and expertise around those early stage enterprises to facilitate their success. Together, we will be stronger. We all have challenges and difficulties, either in business, in our personal development or careers. By bringing together the commercial and academic expertise strengthened through the collaboration between Birmingham and Ludhiana steam houses. Collectively, we will affect change and accelerate performance that benefits us all. We are definitely stronger together and we're very excited to be working with you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Bernard, for your wonderful presentation. Um, Next, uh, I have the honor to uh, invite uh, uh, Professor Julian here for the valedictory address. address. I invite, I invite uh, Professor, Professor uh, okay. Mall introduction. introduction. Uh, Julian, this is Deputy Vice Chancellor for Innovation and uh, Enterprise. And uh, Enterprise. Birmingham City University. I have a. I so have a. Uh, Prof. Julian, can you? Uh, you Prof. I can. Julian. Can yeah. Um, at Birmingham City University, he is also uh, emeritus University. professor. He is also uh, emeritus professor. Uh, professor at uh, BML Munjal University. Uh, he has uh, founded uh, he has, uh, and. Uh, founded in Centers, centers and, and individual less less national and in, in 2020 we will be launching innovation and knowledge and entrepreneurship and co-funded the world's 
basic study and currently in the UK government scheme of a 75 million initiative. We are delighted to have you, Prof. The stage is yours. Prof, you're muted now. Prof, you're muted. Sorry. Thank you very much. Technology is not my strength. Thank you, Vijay, for uh, your introduction. And uh, firstly, I would like to thank everybody for uh, joining us today um, and learning a little bit about STEAM um, from uh, all of the participants that uh, you've heard from. Um, I'll start by uh, just thanking uh, Sunil Munjil um, for his vision and his passion uh, in terms of the STEAM uh, agenda. It is something that you've heard today um, that's been described. It's relatively new and uh, it's an exploration and uh, we're absolutely delighted the uh, BCM uh, Foundation uh, is joining us on uh, our, our journey uh, with STEAM um, and uh, rolling that out uh, to create new ideas, new products, new services, and really challenge the status quo in terms of uh, education and the way it's delivered. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, a few other people <coughs> who've been with us on our journey. So uh, the whole of the Munjil family, uh, have been really supportive in uh, uh, our steam house uh, endeavors and what we're doing collectively uh, in India. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, Mr. Rai and Dr. Prem who have been absolutely instrumental in uh, helping us establish uh, our partnership and our relationship. And it's a very exciting uh, one for us. Over the last few years, I've had the pleasure of visiting India many times and I've traveled uh, from the top of India, in the wonderful north, um, down the west coast to Mumbai and down to Kerala. And I think it's safe to say that um, my journey has been uh, very challenging in India. I've uh, learned new things, I've met new people, new friends along the way. It's a wonderful country um, and it very it, it differs from state to state. And uh, it always amazes me uh, the difference in uh, in, in the states and uh, how they operate and uh, how the, the states feel and look. Um, and that's challenged me um, as I've been on those journeys to open my mind uh, to new perspectives, um, to look at things differently. And I think this is a metaphor for the journey we're on together in terms of the STEAM agenda, both in the UK, uh, but also in India. And we're at the vanguard, at the front it, uh, of, of all of this in terms of what we're trying to do together. It's a, a very exciting journey, and it's one that uh, has been delayed slightly, as Sunil said uh, at the beginning, because of COVID. We would have hoped to have been up and running um, in terms of our courses and our provision uh, by now. But uh, we've just been delayed a little bit, but we will be starting this uh, later this year in terms of new undergraduate and postgraduate curriculum. We're also going to be doing um, industry-led uh, continuing professional development courses. And we'll be doing this both uh, physically uh, and virtually uh, online in terms of delivery. Um, it's a very exciting time and it's gonna be a challenging one because this is new um, to the Indian market and it's also new um, to the UK market. Uh, there aren't many uh, universities doing this integrated approach that we're doing, um, merging the creative with the science uh, and technology, engineering and mathematics. So it's going to be uh, new, um, but uh, it is a path that we've researched very, very heavily, as you would have seen by some of the presentations um, today. And it will lead to outcomes, uh, really interesting outcomes in terms of employability uh, for the students that go through the courses and also uh, for the industrialists and those working uh, in industry. Uh, where they can really get a handle on innovation and looking at things from a very different perspective. And we know that will lead to new innovation in terms of products, services, um, and it will be a really good uh, time to, uh, to get together uh, linking India with the UK. So our Steam House opens um, later this year, and we will be joining that uh, both physically and virtually uh, in Ludhiana with our centre. And we're very excited um, to be on this journey together. So I just wanted to say that as a few words to close the event today. And as you've heard earlier, 
uh, from the other participants, there will be some deep dive courses, uh, which you can uh, access uh, in July. And then we have on the 13th of July, our international STEAM conference um, that will be uh, joining um, countries right across the world from uh, Canada, the US, uh, across Europe. And I hope India uh, will join us uh, on the 13th of July in the international conference. So once again, thank you for joining us. I uh, really appreciate your participation today. And I hope you've, uh, you've learned something and are as excited about the journey that we're on together um, as we are uh, in the UK and in India. So thank you everybody for uh, participating. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. Thank you. Thank you. I wish to thank uh, uh, Chairman Sneel Munjal, Julian, and the team from BCU and uh, the Hero Mind Mind Institute for supporting uh, us uh, being facilitator for this uh, conference. All the delegates, uh, many thanks for attending the National Seminar on Transforming Education. You have tasted uh, what is uh, the revolution that can come in education in India. As you see, this can be paradigm shift in our education system. We have planned uh, three deep dive sessions for deeper understanding of STEAM-based education. These sessions are scheduled on 14th, 15th, and 16th July, 2021. We also have a STEAM House UK conference. We'll share the details uh, with the participants of this. Those who wish to join the STEAM House UK conference on 13th July, they are welcome. I wish to uh, add a special note of thanks to Mr. S.K. Rai. Mr. Rai is uh, Vice Chairman of Hero Cycle and he is the one who actually conceptualized this conference. I'm sure all the attendees have uh, taken home the new perspective to education and it will, it will uh, help us actually to create a new world of uh, education. Thank you very much. Good goodbye for now. Thank you. Thank you.